Hello, everyone. My name is David Dino Tarras, and welcome to another episode of Sky's the Limit. Our guest today is the author of Sick and Tired of Being Sick and Tired, Solutions for a Better, Healthier Life. He is the co-owner of Back and Body Clinic in New Jersey. He's a master rehabilitative trainer. I'd like to know more about that. Strength athlete, motivational speaker, and he has delivered over a thousand presentations since the early 90s. His first book, Top Secrets for Success for Kids, was a bestseller, and he is the member of the Association of Old-Time Barbell and Strengthmen. He has performed in front of the world's elite athletes, and today he's our special guest. But today, his message is all about you, all about us, and who you are. But my favorite is who you can become. Today, please welcome my friend, colleague, and our special guest, Russell Jones. Russell, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you, David. You know, but more important than that great introduction and all those things, is that at 66 years old, it's really my personal experience working on myself as well as many others, which is like a spotlight on what works and what doesn't work. Well, Russ, you know, I'm a, I'm a work in progress myself, so I, I, I'm trusting uh, this book is going to be a, a big help. So let's just jump right into it. Russ, why did you write the book? Well, because I really am sick and tired of the cumulative negative effect that misinformation has on individuals and their families. Like what? There, well, there are 26 specific things listed in the book. Uh, let, me, let me just read them to you quick, all right? Please. All right, so here's the book, just to, so you know there's really a book. Okay. And, uh, okay. So here we go. I'm sick and tired of America being obese and overweight. As a kid growing up, 15 people could fit in an elevator. Now, only three. I'm sick and tired of my friends and family dying way too young. I'm sick and tired of people coming to me injured, sick, and out of shape to tell me everything they know about health. I'm sick and tired of lazy, out-of-touch doctors who would rather write a prescription than offer sound guidance on how to eat and exercise. Right. I'm sick and tired of the fitness industry preying on people who need real help. I'm sick and tired of hearing people blame their genetics for their health woes when the truth is that it's their lifestyle. I'm sick and tired of finicky eaters of all ages. I'm sick and tired of how physically weak America has become. I am sick and tired of erectile dysfunction commercials. I am sick and tired of people who tell me how many steps they took today. I'm sick and tired of 20 year old fitness gurus. And I'm sick and tired of those who tell me how their doctor told them how fit they are but they have to stay on three lifetime medications. I'm sick and tired of the two major obstacles to everyone's health, misinformation and habits. I'm sick and tired of health experts who look anything but healthy or are on a PED needle. That's performance enhancing drugs. Thank you. I'm sick and tired of yoga classes filled with uncontrollable gas. If all the world became vegetarians, it would be people emitting vast quantities of methane gas replacing cows as number one. I'm sick and tired of everyone being braced. Ankles, knees, backs, elbows, wrists, necks. Braces can hold you up, but eventually they hold you back. And I'm sick and tired of desperate people signing up for the quick fix, gastric bypass, gastric sleeves, vitamins, magic potions, and lose weight quick schemes. I am so totally sick and tired of people being tired with no energy or vitality and not knowing what to do about it. I'm sick and tired of hearing how people can't get a deep sleep without drugs. Note, sleep is as important as diet and exercise. I'm sick and tired of folks not being able to live the life they desperately want to live. And I'm sick and tired of hearing people complain of back and neck pain with their only solution being drugs. I'm sick and tired of folks wasting money on bogus exercise equipment. And I'm sick and tired of the food industry and how government approves of health killing foods to eat, follow the money. I'm sick and tired of the fight cancer industry, follow the money. I'm sick and tired of parents and grandparents unable to participate in energetic activities with their families. And lastly, I'm sick and tired of people thinking it's normal to be abnormal and saying, it's just the way I am. I try not to offend anyone, David, but if I do, it's with love in my heart. Well, I certainly hope that um, 
Uh, people don't mind having their toes stepped on. Certainly, they shouldn't uh, wear sandals around you uh, if they do. Uh, there's a there's a lot of there's a lot of things there, Russ. And being in the um, the fitness industry uh, for your entire life, uh, I, I'm I'm sure there's a lot of frustration in there, Russ. Who is the audience for this book? You you shared a lot of sick and tires. Who is the audience for this book? Well, David, when when I was originally asked to write it and thought about writing it, I thought the audience would be 40 year olds and up, people who are sick and tired. But then um, as the book came about and people have looked it over, the transcript, why limit the audience to any particular group or age? It's really folks who are frustrated with the shape they're in, any age. Right. Well, Russ, and you know, and you're seeing younger kids now uh, more than ever before, you know, experiencing uh, challenges with with weight loss and and lack of activities, right? Exactly, totally. Russ, please share a story from the book that you know really has spoken to you, really encouraged you. All right, so uh, why don't we just take the cover picture? I know you can't see it, David, but okay. the cover picture is this grizzly guy in front of a few thousand people breaking a huge stack of bricks. Okay. Right? And the, the, the impact, the arm is hitting the bricks on impact, and the bricks are exploding. It's a, it's a really cool picture. And it really, we felt tied in with the message about somebody being sick and tired and frustrated, and they just want to lash out and kick something or punch, punch a wall or something. Right. Uh, the, deep, the, the story behind the, the cover, really, is that, yeah, that's a picture of me, you know, a few years back in front of a... a a big uh, audience and it's really about how we train in this country you know how we think of exercise and kind of the mindset we have so usually you know you talk about training today it's the mus musculoskeletal system you know strength work it's the heart and it's the lungs and that's pretty much you know what people look at when they look at training and um but i think we have to go a little bit deeper so in order to get everything firing right, we have to have the nervous system right. But to get the nervous system right, well, we gotta have the mind right because the mind controls the nervous system. Okay. So the, the the stack of bricks I came up with, the we call it the wall of negative, all right? Those are the negative things that people have put in place over the years that hold them back from doing sp something special with their lives. So, I mean, the names of my bricks are envy and frustration and hate and guilt and revenge and insecurity and fear and laziness and bad attitude. And so um, what happened to me was, and I'm, I'm just like everybody else, what happened to me was I was um, actually visiting some friends down the Jersey Shore a number of years ago. And uh, there was our, my kids were younger and um, their kids were going to a youth conference, youth rally, so on a Saturday night. And uh, so we went to the youth rally and, and the most recorded guitar player in history was playing guitar. So it was, you know, I was having a good time. And in the intermission, a couple of guys got up and they started doing strongman stuff, some strength feats, you know, bending and breaking and tearing things. And I was, you know, it, to me, it was like watching a magician and I'm trying to figure out like, what's the trick, you know, what are they doing, you know? And so um, anyway, I never did figure it out, but that night we go to go home, we drive up the Garden State Parkway and of course, uh, my wife left her purse in the church where they were holding this rally. Wow. So we drove back down the parkway. You know how that goes, David, mm -hmm. when you got to turn around in the middle of the night. The church is all locked up. We can't get in. So we go over to our friend's house, knock on the door. We sleep there. We go to church in the morning with them. Thank goodness it was an honest church because there's her purse. And I was sitting on the second row. And one of the strong men get up, got up to speak, you know, they invited him up and he made this, um, he started sharing about how he didn't think he was going to make it to New Jersey because he had lost a daughter seven years old to a long-term illness a week before. Wow. And I had lost a son a few years before that to a, in a car crash. And I was, you know, sometimes you share tragedies. I'm sure, you know, you know how that goes. You just get more empathetic, you know, when, when you have experienced something somebody else has. So anyway, so the guy sitting in front of me and the whole service, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what they're talking about, but I'm just thinking I should reach out to this guy because I know what grieving is about. And I, I'm, 
pretty sure I know what he's going to be up against. So anyway, the service ends. I reach out in front, in front of me. I put my hand on the guy's shoulder, having no idea what I'm going to say. And this guy turns around and he looks at me and, you know, like, what do you want? You know? And uh, so I just said, well, I'm not exactly sure, but I heard the story about your daughter and I thought maybe we could talk a little bit. And so he goes, oh, gee, right away he broke into, I, I, we got a show down in Atlantic City tonight. We got to get on the road. And, and then all of a sudden something hit him. I don't know what it was, but he, he called over one of his guys and he said, uh, and talked to him a little bit. And then he said, okay, let's go to lunch. So my wife and me and, and this guy go to lunch and we're sharing stories. And I, I don't know if you remember the movie Roadhouse, yeah. but the Patrick Swayze character was a bouncer that toured all these bars in the Southwest. I mean, you know, all these uh, brawls and fights and everything all the time. Well, this was this guy's life, his previous life. I mean, his stories were like, like crazy. Anyway, towards the end of, uh, of, having uh lunch to get really well and uh, maybe you can help me out and break break some bricks with us tonight and so david you get a picture of this here i am in jacket and tie you know back in those days and and i'm i'm there and i go listen man i said you got the wrong guy i said i you know i might look strong to you but i am you know i'm just an old basketball player and the key word there being old i was 39 years old at the time and I, I, there was no way, you know, I ever did anything like that in my life before. And he goes, ah, don't worry about it. You know, you can do it. We'll, we'll show you how to do it. You, you're probably strong enough. And so um, my wife was there. And at that point, she was very supportive. And she said, go ahead, honey, go help the guy. So next thing I know, I'm driving down the Garden State Parkway with a guy from San Diego, California, sitting next to me. And he's teaching me how to break bricks while I'm driving. So every few minutes, I'm turning to him and I'm going, you're crazy. And he's yelling back at me watch the road and we're going back and forth and so we get down to this place in Atlantic City we pull in the parking lot we walk in the door and there's up on the stage there's these two big stacks of bricks set up and he pointed to the stack of bricks on the left side and he goes that's your stack of bricks nine bricks two inches thick of concrete so 18 inches of concrete and I said well do we get to warm up or try this out and he goes no we don't have enough bricks so I said okay so he said we're gonna go warm up in the back so we go in the back, we warm up. Basically, that was, uh, that was interesting too, but we don't have time for that story. We come out, the lights are flashing, music's cranking, everybody's all pumped up. There's a room, you know, packed place and everything. And after the first thing, we get up in front of the stack of bricks. So the deal was two of us are gonna break two stacks of bricks simultaneously. So we're gonna have a countdown. So I'm all pumped up, like being at a sporting event or a rock concert or something, right? All pumped up. and. And so they start counting down. They go, 10. And, and as soon as they said 10, all that excitement just went like right out of me. And I was filled with something called fear, right? But I'm not talking about the type of fear, you know, where somebody goes, Hoo! and you go, Hoo! you know, I'm not talking about that type of fear. I'm talking about the deep down in your stomach, knees knocking, hands sweating when it's cold, fear. And I was afraid of three things. One, I was afraid it's going to break my arm. Two, I was afraid it was going to be very, very painful, and I don't like pain. And three, I was afraid that the bricks weren't going to break, and everybody's going to be laughing at me as they carried me out to the local hospital. So it sounds funny now, but it was absolutely not funny then. Right. I had one of those moments of truth where it was like, put up or shut up. There's no, like, you can't put this off. Like, you have to deal with this right now. Right. And a thought flashed into my mind about a talk I heard a few years before. And all I remember from the talk was, the guy said that faith and fear cannot live in the same body at the same time. And I remember walking around for days going, faith and fear cannot live in the same body. I didn't know what the guy meant. And then it finally dawned on me that there's certain things in life that's all or nothing. It can't be almost, it can't be 99%. It's gotta be all in or not all in. And that's how faith and fear is. So anyway, during this moment of truth, I prayed like I never prayed before. This was, you know, way more than back in Catholic school days. I prayed and I jumped up. I hit that stack of bricks. They went flying. There was nobody more excited in the place than I was. But, you know, the good news is, is that you don't have to go and set up a stack of bricks in your living room or wherever and to have this breakthrough because it really all comes in your mind. That's going back to what we we're talking about with training and fitness and everything else. It all starts there. Like once you get your head straight or close to straight, 
then you can deal with all the other things, the habits, the maintaining the body weight and everything else. But if you don't understand that where that little voice is coming from that wants you to lose at everything you do, then you know, you're, you're never really going to be in shape. You're always going to be on a roller coaster. Russ, wow, well, that's, that's, that's a tremendous story. And we all face many different walls and of, uh, of uh, you know, that, that hold us back, right? And I love the thought, you know, pray, don't panic, worship, don't worry. Uh, I, uh, that's I, good. I, I like to, um, you know, keep those in mind because I, I know when I'm, when I'm praying, I can't panic. When I worship, I can't worry. And, uh, and uh, faith, uh, faith when, when can certainly replace fear. Russ, you know, if, if we were to go into a, the bookstore and there's not many left, but when we go in the bookstore, there's self-help sections and there's thousands of books from sealing the floor. What makes this one different from all the rest? Well, I think the thing that makes it different is that it deals with physical fitness in a way very few have heard of or really understand. And it really considers the whole person, fears, habits, state of mind. And then, then we go into the position that you're in and, and how to get, you know, activate the right muscles at the right time, what turns off, what turns on. We, we do this all the time at our clinic, teaching people how to um, activate the right muscles at the right time so that when they are going about their daily lives or their sports or whatever they want to do, it's just a natural thing. They're not, they're not, uh, they're able to perform the game of life. Russ, what are some of the, 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 the takeaways from the book? Um, well, after you read the book, right, and consider all, its po all it points to, well, what do you do? Uh, I would say join my revolution. Join my community. Question the experts. Rethink everything you think you know about health, fitness, and wellness. Reach out so we can have a conversation. Russ, is there anything else that you'd like to share with the audience? Um, just that, uh, just like a couple of examples, David, like uh, one of my chapters is about grip strength. So here, here we go. All kinds of research is directed right now, the current research, that um, grip strength is a great indicator, not only of your current health, but as well as a predictor of your future health, as well as even your longevity. So, David, when we walk into a gymnasium, you know, over here is the treadmills and the ellipticals, the cardio section. Yeah. And then over here are the machines for the pretty boys and girls that don't want to get their hands too, you know, stressed out, so they work out here. And then over here we have the Olympics weights, and hopefully the gym lets you use chalk so you can make a little bit of a mess and you really, you know, grunt and groan, right? And then down the hall, there's the studio where they have yoga classes and Zumba classes and everything else. But Dave, when we go into the gymnasium, do we ever see a room or a place for grip strength? No. Here we have something that's, you know, so vitally important to talk about, to be aware of to, in your training, and nobody's talking about it. I talk about a crippling back pain that I experience. I mean, I'm talking about not getting off the floor for a few days. I'm talking about, I, I talk about depression that I... I had to go through. I talk about the best food lesson I ever learned, and it was from my mom. I talk about a very unique goal-reaching plan for non-A-types like me. You know, everybody gets, I get frustrated around these super A-type personalities that are just so structured and so disciplined, and you know, boom, 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 that's how they, they lead their lives, and they accomplish everything, and they get everything off their checklist every day. Well, I'm not one of those people. You know, and, but I talk about how you can still succeed in reaching your goals and not be in one of those, you know, machines. And, uh, and I also talk how I exercise less than two hours a week and I get fantastic results. Wow. Russ, how would people get a copy of the book? Well, Amazon is the way to go since they're publishing it for me, All as right. well as uh, there's a Kindle version of the book there as well. And, you know, for further information, you can visit my website email me or call me russelljonespeaks.com r-u-s-s-e-l-l-j-o-n-e-s-s-p-e-a-k-s.com awesome russell we're so grateful that you would make and take the time and i want to encourage the the viewers i've known russ for a very long time he's so dedicated and committed and he he walks the walk and he not only does he talk the talk so russell i want to thank you for coming on today 
And I want to remind the listeners that you can uh, absolutely uh, find us on our Sky's the Limit Facebook page, or you can uh, visit us on uh, fa- uh, LinkedIn at David Dino Terrace and on Twitter at Dino Terrace, at Dino Terrace. Want to thank you for watching. Want to thank you for listening. And I want to remind you that sky's the limit. Thank you, Russell.